Uh, very little outside of communicating with, with clients, but uh, I talked to my people today. Nobody seems to be particularly concerned. We don't have portfolios that are concentrated in uh, the, the, negative, uh, the negative earnings uh, jamboree. So, you know, to us, it just looks like regular volatility, but with a really powerful story behind it. And Sarah, I found myself nodding along in agreement to everything that David Rosenberg said. And I don't normally agree with everything David Rosenberg says uh, on this network, but I think he has it right. And I think he has it right for the right reasons. So my first reaction is, I'd like to see you run a factory, not you, but like anyone, run a factory <laughs> coming out of, of a pandemic. I'd like to see Sarah and run accurately a factory. <laughs> well, right. Um, I can run a I'd factory. Like to, I'd I, like I, to see I anybody. It. Just be different. Guys, let's not lose the thread here. People are hanging on our every words. This is the, this is the market zone. I'd like to see anybody <laughs> run a factory for the first time coming out of a pandemic and accurately be able to forecast exactly how many units of whatever might be needed. This is uncharted territory for people in the manufacturing side of the economy. So we'll put services inflation aside. We've had inflation in services for like 20 years, okay? That's the, the part of inflation we don't talk about. Um, everything from chips to autos to trucks to boats to lumber, all of that comes as a result of us just not knowing what the need will be six months in advance. Then we get vaccines announced in November, shots in arms in January. People just have a, need a chance to catch up. So I would not say that this is the type of inflation that should lead you to make drastic changes in your asset allocation. But if you are looking for opportunities, I would be thinking about the types of companies that have pricing power, sustainable pricing power, because it is likely that we're not like going to revisit the disinflation of, of 2020. Real estate, entertainment, two areas historically what? that have done a very good job raising prices in response uh, to higher prices in the overall economy. So I, I get all of that, Josh, and, but you're also a guy that uh, assesses momentum, assesses the technicals. When you look at the areas that did so well last year and also saw quite a lot of inflows into as well, do, do you look at some of those and the way they pull back and worry there's quite a lot of downside beneath them? I was looking at the NASDAQ. That's a great question. Thank, thanks, Wolf. I was looking at the NASDAQ before I came on the air. The NASDAQ over the last one year has now erased all of its outperformance relative to the Dow and the S&P. So uh, that outperformance was something like 60% over one year versus 38% for the S&P. That's like largely been erased. I think it's about 42 to 38 now. Probably gives up the rest of it. And you know, what's really important to point out is that this is why people should not be investing in the rearview mirror, allocating to whatever gave you the best returns over the last quarter or the last uh, six months. If you do that on a regular basis, you are de facto buying high, selling low. Most financial advisors, people who do what I do in the wealth management industry, have set the rules in opposition to that issue. We are buying low, selling high every time we're doing uh, a rebalance in a portfolio. So I think most people who are managing money professionally as advisors are getting this moment right. And then a lot of people on the retail side who are momentum players without discipline, meaning they go long because something's going up, but they have no idea where to exit. That's, I think, where you're seeing a lot of the excess volatility coming from. And that's where it should come from. So if you look at insurance stocks, large cap banks, the types of things that momentum kids aren't in, it's another day at the office. That's, that's pretty much all I'm seeing right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.